Hey guys, it's Kevin R. Breen from FailAccuracy.com. And Americans are divided on whether or not we should allow the building of a mosque at Ground Zero. And of course, by mosque at Ground Zero, I mean building that is not a mosque and also not at Ground Zero. It's actually an Islamic community center two blocks away from Ground Zero. And if I can get fired for including work as an artist on South Park on my resume when I really only worked as a graphic designer on a street, called South Park Avenue, which shouldn't have happened because I wasn't technically lying. Then there's no way I could get away with calling this a mosque at ground zero. But here are the details. Now first, the space was designated with the name Cordoba House, which organizers claim represents an 8th to 11th century Cordoba where Muslims lived peacefully with Christians and Jews. Critics say the name is in honor of the Muslim conquest over the Christian city in Spain. But stubborn Muslim organizers wouldn't have any of it. They gave the proverbial finger to the critics and said, we're keeping the name whether you let... Oh. Wait. No, they did change it. Organizers changed the name of the planned space to Park 51 to avoid association with conquests while subtly implying that they're hiding UFOs. But what is in a name? That which we call the Cordoba House? If by any other name, would it smell as subversive? Newt Gingrich smells something. He said, It is a test to see if we have the resolve to face down an ideology that aims to destroy religious liberty in America. Exactly. If we don't oppose this building by giving up religious freedom in the United States, the United States might lose religious freedom. And don't try to argue equality under the law because that is not the issue here. As the Constitution says, all animals are equal, but some animals are more equal than others. Wait a minute. This isn't the Constitution. This is George Orwell's Animal Farm. All right, so the Bill of Rights actually says, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or the press or the right of the people to peaceably assemble and to petition the government for redress of grievances. Okay, so that pretty much explains why it would be unconstitutional to interfere legally unless it could be demonstrated conclusively that the organizers are terrorists. But as New York Daily News writer S.E. Cup points out, the argument for the constitutional right is a straw man. She said, No one in serious circles who opposes the mosque at Ground Zero is suggesting that it should be made illegal to build a Muslim house of worship near the site of the 9-11 attacks. Exactly. No one is actually suggesting that we should take legal action to prevent them from building. Oh. Okay, well, there's that. Alright, in that. Yeah. Th oh. Okay, a lot of people actually. Hey, I don't know what SC Cup was talking about. But what about people who recognize the legal right to build a community center but feel they should voluntarily avoid it? The man heading up the project says that he wants the location to be near ground zero to push back against the extremists, demonstrating the ability of peaceful Muslims to thrive in a community of mutual tolerance, a spirit the opposite of that which was behind the attacks of 9-11. Many prominent Muslims, including Akbar Ahmed, and others with names that are even more difficult to pronounce, have publicly opposed the building, saying that it has the appearance of fitna or mischief-making forbidden by the Quran. Some peaceful Muslims worry that violent Muslim extremists would point to it as a symbol of victory despite the intent. Those who have been following Failocracy closely for a while probably remember when I received death threats for a video I posted criticizing violent Muslims while displaying pictures of Muhammad created by Persian Muslims. Of course, I literally did draw a target on my forehead in that video. The video has been removed from YouTube, not because I was afraid of radical Muslims. I knew what I was getting into when I drew the target on my forehead but because YouTube rejected my revenue sharing application over it. It's okay to be a broke martyr, but if I'm gonna stay alive, then I've gotta start making some scratch. But I would never do anything unethical to get it. I consider myself- Hey Kevin, have you seen my wallet? I believe you left it in the fish tank. Why am I standing up for Muslims even after personally receiving death threats? Because while I honestly don't know very many Muslims personally, I do know a few. Fun fact! The first three I can think of are all named Muhammad. None of them are violent extremists. I realize that they use the same religious text as violent extremists, but that doesn't invalidate their interpretations any more than the Christians who still believe in the practice of killing homosexuals demanded by Leviticus 2013 invalidate the beliefs of Christian pacifists. Should they build it? Being a non-Muslim who could not possibly understand the emotional impact and possible repercussions this could have on 9-11 victims 
and peaceful Muslims themselves. I don't know if it's my place to answer that question. Maybe you can. But should we let them build it if they choose to? The answer to that question is no. I mean, yes. <laughs>